looked at the baby face of this killer, you wouldn't think he could be capable of the gruesome acts that he was accused of. Jürgen Barsch is a German serial killer who murdered four boys between the ages of 8 and 13 and attempted to kill another before he was caught. Just a warning, this is a tough one to get through. From his childhood to his adulthood, he was a very disturbed individual. It's a very gruesome episode, even for me. And I've looked at a lot, so if you're not used to a lot of true crime, this episode may not be for you, because he was one disturbing individual. In fact, maybe the worst, there's a lot of bad serial killers, but he is up there with the top. And I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he is an awful person. So viewer discretion is advised. Hello, my name is Holly. Welcome to my crime lair. I couldn't film inside my murder she shed today because it is just so dang hot today. And I do not have electric back to my she shed yet from the tornado. So y'all get a little outside view today. Not much, just a little bit. I can't show you a whole lot or you're going to see all my tornado damage over here. And that's nothing you want to look at while I record. So I've got it just right here where you can't see all that. You may can hear Simon breathe and blow me too. I'm sorry about that if you do. Anyway. This is just what I get to work with today. So, enjoy. You're going to have to forgive me for these German names. You know, I'm about to slaughter them. Unfortunately, I only know one language, and that is redneck. And rednecks do not speak German. So, we're going to do the best we can do today. And just hold on, hang on, we're going for a ride. Y'all ready? Jorgen Barsch was born Karl Heinz Rosinski on November 6, 1946. His mother just left him at the hospital as she was dying of tuberculosis. For the first 11 months of his life, he was cared for by the nurses at the hospital. 11 months, he was adopted by Butcher and his wife. Their names were Garhard and Gertrude Barsch. They changed his name to Jorgen Barsch when they adopted him. Unfortunately, this wasn't the happy ever after ending, as you already know. Gerhard wanted a son who would follow in his footsteps and work at the butcher shop with him. And he constantly tried to make a real man out of Jurgen. Whatever that is. Gertrude suffered from OCD and was so fixated on cleanliness. Although Gergen was potty trained when he was adopted at 11 months, due to the trauma of changing homes, it caused him to start pottying on himself again. Gertrude was just disgusted by this and began beating the boy. The beatings were so bad that Gerhard threatened to leave his wife many times because he couldn't stand to see the young boy beat. Jurgen was not permitted to play with other children lest he become dirty. This continued into adulthood. His clothes were even chosen each day by his mother, and she personally bathed him until he was 19. His mother would play with his privates while bathing him and would often S.A. him. I don't know, but for some reason, all this with his mother gave me the Norman Bates vibe. Jurgen was not allowed to bring friends home and was made to be home by 7 p.m., where they could eat dinner as a family, and then his mother would bathe him, and then he was made to get dressed in his parents' bedroom in front of them. Weird. Afterwards, he was required to get in bed between his mother and father while they watched TV until 9 p.m. Then he went to bed. He really had no chance of being normal because all this would even mess up the most normal child, I would think. For Jürgen's first six years, he was locked in the basement cellar, which would become his permanent bedroom. He had scars all over his body from his mother's brutal beatings. When Jürgen was eight years old, his 13-year-old boy cousin came to visit him. Jürgen was excited because his cousin let him use his headphones. Headphones were something his parents never allowed him to have. But after using them, his cousin told Jürgen that now he had to pay him back by lying on the couch and unzipping his pants. And then his cousin essayed him. At the age of 10, Jürgen entered school. Because in his parents' opinion, it was not sufficiently strict, he was then moved to a Catholic boarding school. One summer, while Jürgen was home from school, him and a few other boys just decided to explore the woods a bit near his home. When they came up on an old air raid shelter, basically a tunnel underground, the boys lit a newspaper on fire in order to explore this dark tunnel. Although all the other boys became scared and ran back out, 
Jurgen was intrigued by this new hiding place. He would often come back to this tunnel and bring a candle to be able to see it. This became like a home to the teen boy. When Jurgen was 13 at Catholic school, he began getting essayed by his choir teacher. This started happening at church camp after Jurgen became sick with a high fever and the choir teacher took him to his room in order to look after Jurgen. The teacher got in bed with him to keep him from being chilled. And this began the many times of being essayed by his teacher. He kept running away from school after that until his parents finally let him at 14 be apprenticed for his father's colleague as a master butcher. The apprentice would often bully him, though, and called Jurgen a mommy's boy. Perhaps this was the last straw for young Jurgen because he got tired of being always the victim and decided to become the one in control. So on June 1961, Jurgen lured a boy in the woods and down into the dark tunnel where he beat the boy, tore off his clothes, and attempted to SI him. The boy ran and told his father. The father went to the police, but Jurgen was able to lie his way out of trouble. Jurgen had a type of boy that he preferred, skinny boys with dark hair, and they had to be between 9 and 13 years of age or younger. A to him, anyone over that age was considered a grandpa. By the time he was 15, he became obsessed with the desire to cut, so he purchased some razor blades, which he then hid in his tunnel. Jurgen knew exactly what plans he had for those razor blades because of his many fantasies he had already had about what he was going to do with those razor blades. And you'll find his fantasies are extremely disturbing. In March 1962, when Jurgen was 15, he decided to make his first kill. Jurgen found an easy way to meet his victims. He met them at a carnival, played with them, and bought them sweets or tickets for the rides. He then told them about a former air raid bunker in a hidden treasure. This is how he became known as the carnival killer or the fun fair killer. After meeting 8-year-old Claus Young, he lured him back to the tunnel, then essayed the young boy. He then knocked him in the head several times with a weapon he had hid in the tunnel until he thought he was dead. He then began to practice cutting with his razor blades. Mutilation of his victims would only become more violent as he grew older. After partially cutting up the boy, he then buried the young boy's body in the tunnel and left him there to rot because he had to rush home because he knew that he had to quickly be back home in order to have dinner and get his bath from his mother. He wouldn't kill again until 1965 after he was able to get his driver's license. He was around 18 years old when he headed out to a carnival at a nearby village, but he only made it into the village when he seen 13-year-old Peter Fuchs carrying a package and looking confused. Peter had gotten on the wrong train and was lost, so he was asking people directions to the police station. Jurgen got out of his car and told Peter, Hop in. I will take you to your destination. But instead, Jurgen took him to his secret tunnel. On the drive there, Jurgen pulled over and forced Peter to undress, tied him up, and gagged him. After they came to the area of the tunnel, Jurgen carried Peter to the tunnel. After entering the tunnel, he began cutting Peter with the razor blades, and then he strangled him to death. He also attempted to essay him, but was unable to. His pleasure truly came from the mutilation after his death, when he began to dismember Peter's body. Only a couple of weeks later, he went back to the carnival and seen a boy that was standing alone. This boy was 12-year-old Yurik Katz. He rode with the boy on a couple of rides fed him candy, and asked the boy if he wanted to come with him so he could make some money. Yorick said, you don't need to give me money. You have already done so much for me that I will just go and help you. Such a polite little boy. Too bad his politeness gets him in awful, awful, awful torture. So Yorick got in Jorgen's car. After he stopped the car when they were in the woods, Yorick began to feel something wasn't quite right. So he tried to open the car door, but it was locked, and as Jurgen grabbed the boy, Ulrich began to scream. Jurgen then put a gag in Ulrich's mouth, pushed him out of the car, made him undress, and then tied him up. Jurgen wanted to take the young boy to the cave, but Ulrich was crying, so instead he just walked him out into a nearby field, told Ulrich to turn around, and hit him in the head with a hammer. Jurich began to scream, so 
Jurgen hit him again and again until the boy became unconscious. Jurgen assumed Ulrich was dead, so he picked him up and carried him back to his vehicle. As he began to drive, he noticed the boy began to rise, so he hit him in the head two more times, and then he finally died. He drove to the tunnel and carried Ulrich's body to the cave. Once inside, he cut open the young boy's stomach and emptied his body cavity out. Jurgen became excited, laid down beside his victim, and pleasured himself. What Jurgen didn't know is that when he was on the ride with Ulrich, a picture had been taken of him. This picture was put in the local newspaper the next day after the boy had came up missing. Later, Jurgen returned to the cave in order to enjoy the boy again. He would later remark that this boy had a beautiful body, but he had to turn the boy over because part of him had rotted so he could enjoy his body better as he did his thing. I know I told you this guy's super disturbing. Around this time, Jurgen began drinking heavily. One night, he was caught drinking and driving. This caused him to lose his driver's license. He had an idea, though, of how he could still kidnap a boy and then catch a ride in a taxi. He bought a large suitcase and some ether. He attempted to chase a child several times, but by the time he actually caught up with the child, the ether had dried out in his handkerchief. On May 1966, 12-year-old Manfred Grassman would be his next victim. He was able to get him back to the air raid shelter in the suitcase. He tied Manford to a post in the tunnel and began torturing him with razor blades. While Manford screamed, he cut off the young boy's privates and even popped out an eyeball. Before Manford took his last breath, he asked Jurgen, are you going to prison now? After he died, Jurgen emptied out his chest and stomach cavity and performed his usual on the young boy's body. He then completely dismembered Manford's body. In June of 1966, only one month after his last victim, he began to feel the need to kill again. By the time he found his victim, 14-year-old victim Peter Frazier, he took him back to the cave and tied him up after beating the boy for a while. He realized he needed to get home in order to make his usual time for dinner. Jurgen told Peter that he was going to have dinner, but afterwards he would come back and kill him. Jurgen left Peter tied up in the air raid shelter. At first, Peter tried to scream for help, but no one could hear him. Then he tried to loosen the rope by shaking around aggressively. As he was shaking around, he knocked over a candle that Jurgen left there. Peter then got an idea that if he moved the candle close enough to the rope, he would burn the rope and free himself. He managed to successfully move the candle close enough to the rope that it started burning. It got to the point where the rope gave out and Peter was freed. Peter ran for help and got to the police station. He told the police exactly what had happened and the police went to the air raid shelter. The police came back and entered the dark tunnel, shining their flashlights for light. As they got deeper into the tunnel, the smell of decaying flesh became stronger. Suddenly, officers began to see body parts spread out in different areas of the cave. They stood there stunned, realizing that this was where all the missing boys from the carnivals had disappeared too. Jurgen was immediately arrested when he was seen coming back to the cave to finish off his victim. Jurgen was just 19 and a half when he was arrested and immediately admitted to all his crimes. He was sentenced to five life sentences. In 1971, his sentence was reduced to 10 years of juvenile detention and placed under psychiatric care in a psych ward. There he started writing and married a woman named Gisela Dyke after she visited him at the psych ward. They got married on January 2nd, 1974. Jurgen was told if he received a voluntary castration, it could actually reduce his sentence at the psych ward. So on April 28, 1976, he had the operation. But while performing the surgery, the doctor gave him too much anesthetic, and he died on the operating table. He was buried in his family's plot not far from the air raid shelter where he had mutilated all of his victims. Well, guys, that was heavy. I think I need a couple of days of break after that. And y'all need to see Simon in order to recover. So here he is. And I hope y'all have a blessed weekend. And I need to go get some work done because it's all still waiting for me. Nobody's going to do it but me, right? Got to fix my arch today. One of them got broken from the tornado. And I'm going to show you this tornado damage that I'm not showing. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. 
that's my roof and it's in my garden pond and i see it guess some of y'all seen my house it don't have a roof some of my neighbors are like i have your ceiling fan in my yard i have pieces of this and pieces of that in my yard that's yours i will like huh. well i'll go pick up my roof sometime later keep it for a while i've got plenty to do here neighbors are cool they come and help me but like i don't want it back you guys can pick it up it's okay y'all can pick that little piece up i'm don't have time to be traveling all over the neighborhood we live far apart out here so if it got in their yard it flew a long ways i'll have time to be searching for that when i have all my own stuff to do so get out there and pick it up i'd love for you to that'd be amazing okay i don't know if any of them watch me but just let them know anyway here's my sign mo. let me push this down let me move my mic out of the way because you're going to hit it come here bubba come here get up here you can tell them bye Okay, don't knock me backwards off this porch, because that could be bad. I'll fall on that. And I love y'all. Y'all know that. And we say, bye. Back up too much. I'll fall off this freaking porch. Then y'all can laugh at me. The rest of the day, old as I am, I'll start breaking something. Getting up there. Not no youngin' anymore. That's why I hate starting over with this house. It's gonna suck because when I did this before and built this house, cleaned this land up, I'm a lot younger. Now I'm having aches and pains I never had before while cleaning. It really sucks. When I go to bed at night, I'm like, why did I work so hard? Gurgit, gurgin, yar, yar, gargan, gurgit. Also, there's some dang loud birds around here. They seem to have sat right on top of me and my trees and they just annoy the heck out of me. Yeah, he's being super loud. Shut up up there! You're being freaking loud. I mean, I feed you. At least you can do is have some manners. You got Bertha and Burbath back there and just have some manners, won't you? Tell him to have some manners, Simon. He's not going to go away, is he? Where are you singing at? Don't act happy. Do you see all this junk around us? Not a time to act happy. I'm going to need to learn a lesson from this bird. Jürgen Barsch was born Karl Heinz Sutrazinski. Zing, Zinski. Zinski. Sutrazinski. Sutrazinski. Okay, let's try it again. Thick sided on cleaning, cleanliness. Ugh. He had scars all over his bed. All over his bed. He had scars all over his bed. And get his bathroom from his mother. Yeah. Holy disgusting. When he's saying 13 year old Peter Fuchs. 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 I want to say what it sounds like. It looks like the F word. I'm not going to say that. Let these geese go by. Bye. Please bring me shelter. Please bring me shelter. From your